नमस्कार टुडे इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री ऑफ अमेरिकन लिटरेचर एंड द इम्पोर्टेंट फिलोसॉफिकल कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज नोन टू अस एज ट्रांसेंडेंटालिज्म स्टूडेंट्स सो फार you have been well initiated into the history of british literature and quite possible indian literature too uh, but uh, in your courses of uh, english honors and be a 6th 5th semester american literature is a new paper uh, so uh, it becomes but necessary for uh, all of you to have a proper understanding uh, about america and american literature do uh, brief briefly in that way uh 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 to begin with uh, i shall be uh, talking about two perspectives and two approaches the first uh, approach is of uh, dh lawrence who uh, in his book studies in classical american literature uh, published in the year 1923 uh, uh, appreciates the kind of uh, literature america or americans have created and in this connection he writes there is a uniqueness uh, that belongs to the american uh, continent and to nowhere else it is the shifting over the old uh, uh, psyche to something new a displacement so he is focusing on a newness and a uniqueness on the other hand uh, we have f r lewis who in his book the great tradition uh, published in the year 1948 includes uh, one of the most important american novelist american writer henry james the writer of famous uh, the portrait of a lady as a british novelist so we have uh, these two approaches and uh, in order to understand the first approach and the second approach we shall have to make an entry into the annals of uh, american literature so that uh, uh, we can have a kind of proper beginning with the kind of american literature was and is for all the practical purposes uh, you all know that uh, america was discovered by columbus in the last of 15th century and if i remember the date that is uh, 1492 and uh, after its discovery uh, uh, do uh, it's quite uh, disturbing and uncomfortable to talk about a discovery of america and discovery of india so discovery of america was not for the local inhabitants of america red indians it must be certainly a kind of discovery to those uh, who belong um, who 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 belong to europe or the other parts of the world uh in this connection it is important to talk about one incident which happened in the year 1992 when uh, europe americans you know european americans in that way began to celebrate their uh, 500 years of uh, american discovery uh, the local the red indians the original inhabitants of america they registered a uh, voice of dissent saying that uh, america was not discovered at all america was there before its discovery so called discovery anyway so uh, uh 
so uh, the point is uh, uh, america was discovered uh, as we have to take this from europeans point of view from europeans perspective and so likewise the europeans uh, began to pour into began to settle into america because america happened to be a new land a new world a new found land i mean the land of hopes and desires and it 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 proved to be a heaven for 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 uh, so many people uh, especially on the grounds of uh, religion and politics political and religious backgrounds in that way <clears throat> so uh, when we uh, look at uh, the early settlers uh, in uh, america uh, we find uh, many uh, criminals and uh, and and uh, 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 persecuted persecuted uh, uh, people uh, and those uh, who were transported and burglars and thieves uh, murderers uh, and and on the other hand as we all know that uh, america uh, was also populated by those uh, people who were uh, dissatisfied with the, the kind of uh, state of uh, church and state of uh, religion was back in europe so we all know how uh, uh, in the wake of renaissance uh, there were several movements uh, that focused on the reformation of the churches but one thing was sure and that was how uh, church was degraded and how church uh, fell into kind of a beast of uh, uh, moral and ethical uh, uh, corruption corruption in that way so uh, many uh, ardent christians they all uh, left uh, europe and began to settle themselves in 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 america in 16th century especially in, in north america and they started a new uh, form of christianity that is known to us as uh, uh, puritanism so uh, 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 as far as uh, uh, written or, or literature is concerned uh, we do have the availability of uh, written literature but only from 16th century uh, uh, it means uh, that uh, literature in its written form uh, began in 16th century uh, maybe after that maybe 16th and 17th century but it doesn't mean that uh, before or prior to 16th and 17th century uh, there was no american literature uh, nobody can deny the importance and significance and the presence of uh, oral literature folk literature uh, so that was the part of america and that must have been i mean there is no question of must have it was there it was there but uh, there was no any written uh, record there was no documentation of uh, 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 that kind of uh, 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 literature so uh 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 now it becomes necessary for uh, all of us uh, to 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 uh, to know that how america became a colony and an america a new country a new land it it it, it turned out to be a colony and you must be knowing that uh, in 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 that uh, 16th 17th 18th 19th centuries the world power center was great britain so britain was just colonizing every known place for i mean those places which were rich in its resources so america too became the victim of exploitation and it became a colony of great britain but uh, but many uh, european 
settlers from different European countries, they assembled themselves together and they waged a war, war for liberty, war for freedom, war for happiness against British regime and they declared uh, American independence in the year uh, 1776. Um, you, you must be knowing 4th of July to be the American um, uh, Independence Day. So uh, uh, it is necessary uh, for us uh, to know all these things and, and if you look at uh, this uh, time period it can easily be designated, uh, it can easily be categorized as a colonial period, colonial period and we can have uh, several uh, kinds of writings in this period as well but most of the writings of this period they were taken to be a kind of uh, a prototype, a kind of uh, uh, copy, a kind of imitation, imitation and copy of what? British counterpart, British literature. So they were not uh, given that much of credit, they were not given uh, that much of uh, importance or uh, significance in that way. So, uh, uh, but the question is, uh, they were being written in plenty and uh, uh, the establishment of uh, famous American universities, especially uh, the first one that is Harvard, Harvard in that way. So even the intellectuals and teachers of the Harvard University, uh, they were not in that uh, position to accept the uniqueness of American literature. Uh, they themselves were considering uh, that uh, so-called American literature to be uh, kind of trash or kind of rubbish or kind of, uh, they told, uh, a kind of uh, uh, writing uh, written in the style of uh, uh, British writers. So oh, we have this Cornell University as well. So uh, uh, in spite of uh, these uh, uh, bad responses, uh, Americans kept writing and they kept contributing in the famous journal magazine, the Edinburgh Review. Uh, <coughs> The, the primary form of these settlers writings you know uh, that uh, turned out to be uh, simply focusing on either in the form of certain sermons or exploration uh, narrative now, now the point is uh, as I told you in the beginning that how uh, America saw a new form of Christianity that is known to us as Puritanism so sermon in that way, preachings and teachings and uh, Puritanism is supposed to be the strictest form of Christianity. So exploration narrative in that way uh, we can uh, talk about how uh, writers must have come to uh, America and they must have explored America. They must have uh, traveled far and wide, they must have seen different climates uh, of America, different regions of America, different landscapes of America. And so how uh, these uh, became the part and parcel of uh, uh, their uh, writings, travel, travel, uh, travel narratives, travel writings in that way. So uh, we can see America's description in terms of God's chosen land, uh, chosen land discovered and explored by chosen people uh, in search of New Jerusalem in the desolation and wilderness. So the kind of religious uh, attachment, a religious uh, uh, interpretation we see easily. Uh, but uh, amidst this uh, desolation and wilderness, uh, they had to create a new city, city upon the hill, and it's a difficult task to, you uh, know, in, 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 it's it's not simply a simple simple task at all to uh, leave one place and uh, settle at one place at one go. It must have been a mammoth task. It must have been a big task. So is it the task would be similar as to establish a city, a new city upon the hill? Difficult. I mean. 
uh, difficult uh, situation in that way. So the discovery of America was chosen, was taken as an utopian world, as popularized in the uh, literature of utopia. You must be knowing of Thomas More's uh, Utopia, an ideal world, uh, fit to live in, fit to survive, and uh, to create something new. Uh, we have uh, uh, from this uh, 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 colonial period, we have some important writers and their writings. Uh, to name some of them, I uh, will begin with uh, William uh, Bradford, who has the credit to write famous of uh, Plymouth Plantation. And who can forget uh, Benjamin Franklin and uh, Thomas, uh, Thomas Jefferson? And who came up with their uh, uh, most famous, the Declaration of Independence? And in the in the in this book, uh, they write. And I think this piece of writing is important to talk about the kind of American society they were envisioning and and the kind of literature that came out of that. So I quote. Uh, we hold these truths to be uh, self-evident that all men uh, are created equal, that they are uh, endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. So you must be remembering, uh, you must be Remembering the famous French Revolution and uh, the famous slogan, uh, liberty, equality and fraternity. So we have these, uh, this slogan here, life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whatever any form of government uh, becomes destructive uh, of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such forms as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. So uh, democracy, that the ideals of democracy, uh, you must be remembering uh, famous uh, uh, George Washington, uh, who defines uh, democracy as uh, of people, by people and for people. So this democratic ideals, uh, the democratic ideals happen to be uh, the one of the, uh, they, they happen to be the core of uh, uh, typical American American um, uh, system as envisioned by uh, uh, Benjamin Franklin and Th Thomas Jefferson and we can see other writers in the way uh, who will endorse uh, to this ideal. So we have uh, Charles uh, Brockton Brown uh, for his uh, Violent. We have Washington Irving, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. We have uh, James Fenimore Cooper very famous for the last of the Mohicans. I think a movie has been made on that as well. And we have Harriet Beecher Stowe, very famous for uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin and different other forms of writings. Uh, uh, now it must be noted that uh, I was talking about Puritanism, but somewhere uh, Puritanism turned out to be very strict, very severe, and uh, uh, people began to uh, take themselves away. So we have uh, certain philosophical, new philosophical sects uh, which emerged as a, a kind of a response, a kind of a counter to the uh, ideals and beliefs of uh, 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 Puritanism. So, in that line of thought, we have uh, this uh, Unitarianism, and this uh, it was uh, 
established or it came into existence in the late 18th and early 19th century due to the weakening weakening state of puritanism and uh, this uh, unitarianism was absorbed in the spirit of enlightenment so uh, the unitarianists uh, uh, believed that reason and common sense uh, to be the primary things and uh, on this basis they rejected the puritan uh, uh, notion of uh, innate depravity uh, what is innate depravity i shall just focus on that uh, uh, because in the next section i have to talk about uh, uh, transcendentalism so before that i shall be more than happy uh, to talk about uh, puritanism uh, side by side along with the, uh, transcendentalism so they also rejected the idea of uh, a predestined salvation and instead of uh, Uh, holy Trinity, holy trinity god as one being in three persons uh, the father son and the holy spirit they believed in one god uh, that is uh, jesus christ so uh, now we have to move uh, towards uh, transcendentalism uh, and this can be taken as a different kind of literary phase and uh, it is also known to us as uh, romanticism so uh, i shall be talking about uh, transcendentalism and uh, puritanism side by side you know so uh, uh, let us begin with that so the first thing first that transcendentalism or romanticism uh, began against puritanism and they and the philosophical ideas that were the part and parcel of this very puritanism so uh, uh, they were against uh, who were against transcendentalists they were against the concept of original sin it means puritans believed in the concept of original sin so original sin uh, refers to the creation of uh, adam and eve and how they had been asked to live in the garden of eden in the heaven and they were asked not to touch pluck the forbidden fruit that is apple and we know the story that how uh, satan um, uh, uh, in the form of a snake approached eve and uh, uh, eve in turn uh, pursued adam and in turn adam plucked the forbidden fruit apple and as a result they were banished they were exiled from the garden of eden to live in to live on earth so according to puritans this is the original sin whereby the the two primary human beings adam and eve they go they went against the desire of the god they went against the instructions so by going away with that they committed a crime they committed a sin and uh, as they are our first parents ever so as a result they are the sinner so we too are the sinners original sin no innate depravity so uh, a child is born and he is a sinner he is a criminal uh, he is a uh, corrupt corrupt in that way and this is not done transcendentalists believe that no it's not possible it's not that way a child is not innately depraved he is not uh, she is not morally corrupt and this innate depravity or the moral corruption since the birth is attached to the concept of original sin as believed by uh, puritans salvation of uh, selected few uh, refused denied Uh, puritans believe that we all have come from uh, heaven and it must be our sincere responsibility to regain that place once again we are here in the world of illusion and maya and we should uh, design our ways we should design our life in such a way 
so that uh, we can be in a position to regain the seat, regain the place, regain our place in the Garden of Eden, in the heaven. But the point is, not all the Christians can be entitled to have a re-entry into the lost place. Well, the selected one, chosen one. Instead of this philosophy, uh, Transcendentalism talks about no. Everyone, every individual human being is capable uh, to achieve uh, that Godhood. Because the God of uh, Transcendentalism uh, doesn't live in the periphery or the premises of the church. He is there everywhere. He is there in every living organism. He is there in every subject and object. He is in you. He is in me. He is in each and every uh, particle of this universe in that way. So, 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 uh, 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 they believe in all these things and they also deny that uh, whatever is, uh, whatever has to happen in one's life, uh, it's already predecided, predetermined, pre and uh, nothing can be done. Uh, nobody can change this. Instead of this philosophy, uh, uh, transcendentalism or transcendentalists, they, 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 they talk about, no, this is not a thing at all. Uh, human beings have their own common sense, have their own practical wisdom, have their own rationality, have their own intuitive power. And on this basis, a human being uh, can change his course of life, can change his way of living. It has nothing to do with something that is prefixed, preordained, predecided, predetermined. It's not like that. God is eminent in nature, and 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 uh, uh, the uh, uh, transcendentalists also believe uh, that. Uh, God doesn't live, as I said, doesn't live in the church. He lives in each human being. So in that way, uh, transcendentalists uh, talk about uh, a kind of disapproval of uh, uh, institu institutionalized form of religion. So uh, to make uh, church, uh, to make uh, temple, uh, to make uh, mosque, and, and at this juncture, I uh, remember a very famous Indian poet, Kabir Das. I hope you know all him very well. So I remember two uh, couplets of Kabir. Uh, I will be more than happy to share that here. So one, in one, uh, he criticizes uh, Hindus and he says, uh, uh, पाथर पुजे हरी मिले तुम्हें पुजु पहार उससे भली तो चाक पीस खाए संसार His agenda is clear. He is against uh, the uh, process of uh, uh, of uh, uh, converting God into a stone, into a piece of stone. If I can be graced, placed to uh, while worshipping a stone, it is better to worship a hill or a mountain. And better than this hill and mountain on this piece of a stone, uh, a chalk, the grinding, the stone grinding machine, uh, the uh, grinding machine made of a stone is much more better because it grinds, uh, uh, you know what, rice, uh, wheat, and barley, so that we can make ourselves uh, happy by consuming them. And the other uh, couplet uh, is uh, against uh, that Islami, uh, Islam, Islam or Muslim worshippers uh, and he says Kakar Pathar Jor Ke Masjid Lai Chinai Tachali Mulla Baag Diyo Kya Bahra Hua Khudai so uh, these two couples talk about how uh, religion has been converted into an institution. Uh, transcendentalism is against this process. Religion is not 
to be uh, is not to be the part of a church or the mosque or the temple it has to be the part of open space open area god is there everywhere and one need not to go to uh, any clergyman or any uh, beadle or any uh, priest or any pandit or any mullah uh, to facilitate a kind of meeting between the devotee and the god the devotee in himself in herself is capable with the help of the imagination with the help of the intuitive power with the help of the power of the mind one can easily transcend uh, these mundane realities and can have the privilege can have the bliss to have a rapport with the god with the over soul with the eminent will uh, with that supreme critic with that nature so uh, they are against this institutionalized form of religion and this institutionalized form of religion you know uh, in turn breeds power it breeds authority so they they give more importance to subjective realization they give more importance to uh, subjective uh, power than to the power that is there in any kind of institution any kind of authority so they talk about inner uh, sanctity inner power inner strength of a common human being and they defy even the authorities uh, which 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 exercise certain amount of power uh, the transcendentalists uh, 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 talk about how culture and society uh, that is the material aspects of uh, uh, material aspects of life have simply polluted and corrupted the noble human ways so uh, we have the major philosophers uh, and uh, uh, writers so we have the philosophers especially the german philosophers like kant fichte and schelling and we have the romantic writers of britain we have wordsworth coleridge and others and as far as uh, uh, the writers of uh, uh, transcendentalism and philosophers of this uh, uh, philosophy is concerned we have the biggest protest uh, ralph waldo emerson we have henry david tharu uh, george ripley margaret fuller bronze alcott Theodore Parker, who has been an Unitarian first, and then we have uh, 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 James Freeman, and we have so many others who have uh, significant, who have uh, immensely contributed in the famous magazine, the Dial, uh, to further uh, to to accelerate the cause of uh, transcendentalism. Uh, 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 so. Uh, uh, these uh, philosophers and writers have uh, uh, also paved the way uh, for the emergence of uh, prominent american uh, writers and authors like uh, edgar allan poe uh, walt whitman uh, emily dickinson uh, we have uh, nathaniel hawthorne we have herman melville we have mark twain and so many others so many others uh so uh uh after this uh, uh uh if you look at all these things so out of this uh, brief survey and brief account uh, we can talk about uh, at least two uh, distinct uh, phases of american writing uh, the first that is colonial writing and the second that is uh, uh, romantic or trans- transcendentalist writing and uh, after this uh, if you look at the history of american literature uh, we can talk about uh, uh, the literature based on realism and naturalism uh, and that we primarily see uh, uh, in the in the in the uh, writings of uh, uh, whitman and uh, henry james and some others and in 19th uh, in, in 20th century onwards uh, 
we have the modern age of uh, American literature where uh, we have uh, so many writers and uh, in, in terms of uh, dramatists, in terms of poets, in terms of uh, novelists, uh, which we shall be discussing. Uh, to name in between a few, if you talk about some writers of that. So in poetry, uh, we can talk about uh, Amy Lovell, we can talk about William Carlos Williams, we can talk about Wallace Stevens, we can talk about Ezra Pound, who, uh, yes, he was American, but he again moved to England kept going and coming in that way. So in, 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 in theatre, uh, we have uh, 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 Tennessee Williams, we have uh, uh, this writer uh, Edward Elby, we have Arthur Miller, uh, we have Eugene O'Neill. In fiction, uh, we have, uh, uh, to begin with, uh, 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 William Faulkner, and then we have uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway, we have uh, uh, so many others. So uh, we shall uh, be talking about these writers individually when it comes, uh, when they come to uh, our larger spectrum of consideration. So thank you. Thank you so much.